Hello and welcome, uh, Sister Shuruk. Uh, welcome to uh, that Canadian brother. Thank you for agreeing to have this conversation with us. Yeah, thank you for having me. Um, Sister Shuruk, before I continue, would you mind uh, just uh, telling us the proper pronunciation of your Chinese name? Because there might oh. be some Taiwanese viewers that are yeah. watching this as well. Yeah. Uh, my my Chinese name is Huang Kai Jun. Okay, all right. Yeah. And you can, uh, you can call me Kai Jun or you can call me by my Arabic name Shuruk. <laughs> yeah, Shuruk is definitely easier for me and for yeah. most of uh, the viewers watching. Mm. Shuruk means like the sunrise. Uh, yeah, yeah. Okay. And what made you uh what made you go with that Arabic name or did somebody recommend or suggest that name uh, to you? Uh because because I study Arabic in university, it's my major. So, uh Actually, my teacher gave me this name, and I I like it too. So I just keep using it. Yeah. I see. I yeah. see. As as you probably uh, saw while you were visiting uh, here, Vancouver, Canada, it's yeah. it's very common for the uh, Chinese community here. I imagine yeah. the same thing with the Taiwanese community. I imagine, but yeah. for the Chinese community, they often have uh, an English first name. So uh, it'll be like John Chang, yeah, yeah, or yeah, Michael yeah. Lee, and so yeah. forth. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I haven't uh, really introduced you uh, properly, but yeah. basically, uh, Sister Shuruk um, is a an academic and a translator, and she has translated um, uh, how many books is it? Uh, how many books? I I'm not that sure though. Uh, maybe six or seven <laughs> okay okay more than yeah, i thought but, from english yeah. from english to taiwanese yeah 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 to to uh mandarin chinese to mandarin chinese yeah. right and and uh one of those books would be i think very well known to the viewers who are watching this mm, channel which is yeah. you translated a book by karen armstrong yeah which one was that uh it is called muhammad like i i think it's part of her series about some some prophets in different religions yes yes the, the autobiography on of, right. of those important yeah 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 so uh shuruk has translated uh karen armstrong's biography on the prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam into mandarin chinese yeah so that that book is now uh due to her efforts it is now available to the taiwanese public yeah. and also to the chinese public that can read mandarin it would be mm. available to them as well yeah 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 but but because you know in in china there are there are more uh restriction or yes. limitations and yes. so uh also we we translate in traditional chinese so i'm not okay. sure about the simplified chinese that mm, China is using. So I, I'm not sure about the, the situation in, in China. So Sure, sure. But there's also a large Chinese expatriate community yeah. here in mm. Canada, yeah. in Singapore, Malaysia, mm. you know, in Hong Kong. Yeah. Uh, so I'm sure many of them would be able to to access this. Mm. Um, yeah. But now let, let's take a step back in order to translate uh I mean, this was from English uh, mm. into Chinese. Yeah. But you know Arabic as well. Like you've you've, yeah. you've studied Arabic as well. So yeah. can I ask you, uh, as a Taiwanese uh, person, like what made you interested in the Arabic language? Why uh, did you choose Arabic? Okay. Like, you know, why not German? Why not something yeah. else? Or yeah, 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 I, yeah. I know you've done a number of languages. Maybe you've yeah. done that as well. But yeah, uh, uh, I think that that that. Mm, this related to part of my experience to indigenous people in Taiwan. Because uh, when I was in high school, I started to uh, uh, learn about the indi indigenous culture here in Taiwan. And because uh, indigenous people in Taiwan, they are like, they are discriminated by mainstream community. So, uh, so there's there are many stereotypes and stigma on them, but after I tried to know their culture, I found that there there's a lot of stories behind all those those uh, stereotypes or things like that. And at that time, when I was going to university, and I I have to choose my major, and uh, because 
actually I was preparing for the exam. I, I just I'm just interested in all kinds of languages and uh one one of the the one I choose is Arabic. So I started to prepare for the exam and I read a lot of books. And because before at, at that time, that was long time ago, maybe uh about fifteen or fourteen years ago in Taiwan. But, but why and, Arabic? Why Arabic? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, uh, okay. I'm okay. saying <laughs> and at, at that time in, in Taiwan, what people know about Arabic or Islam is all stereotype and stigma. Like people yeah. just think that when they think of Arab, they think of oil and then terrorists. Only this too. So, mm. but at that time when I read those books, I found that there's there's a lot more history and stories behind these culture. So, I feel like this this is like I I I like this this kind of um, process. You know, when when you try to tear up the stereotype and try to know a community or a culture more. Yeah. So, at that time, I think. Maybe if I choose Arabic, I can know a lot about it. So I, I that's why I get interested in it. Yeah, well, I mean, that's a very good intention. So I, I mm -hmm. thank you on behalf of myself, but also on behalf of mm -hmm. Muslims everywhere, because mm -hmm. you're playing a bridge building role yeah. and you're trying to like reduce misconceptions mm -hmm. and stereotypes yeah. and, and things like that. Yeah. Um, so is, is Arabic difficult for a Taiwanese person to learn i mean i don't mm. think there's any relationship between yeah, chinese yeah. and arabic they're not part of the same family of languages yeah. so uh like how challenging was that what how was that I, for you i think it's is kind of difficult because fusta, fu, fu, there there's many grammar rules in fusta, like the the standard arabic mm. so but but uh, mandarin chinese is uh there is grammar but it's it's not that uh, rigid like like Arabic. So in the beginning, there's many uh, grammar rules you have to remember. But after I went to Egypt to study Arabic, I discovered all of them use Amiya. Mm. <laughs> no, no one is talking Fusha in 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 daily life. So Amiya is. I think that's another challenge because you have to understand Arabic from different culture so it's it's also difficult to mm. i mean this this advice might help some young muslims in the west as well too who yeah. want to travel abroad and they want to travel to the arab world to study yeah. arabic so whenever i hear about people uh traveling to egypt to study arabic that thought or that concern always crosses my head that does it mean they have to learn two languages? Because <laughs> from what I understand, the Amiya, which means yeah. like the common language yeah. on the yeah. street, yeah. the vernacular, mm. that's quite different from the Fusha or the classical Arabic, uh, which yeah. is what religious Muslims want to learn because they mm. want to be able to understand the Quran, yeah. the Hadiths, yeah. the Sira. So does it mean you have to like, learn uh, both? Did you have to learn both? And was that confusing at times? Uh, yeah, I learned both. But because uh, we, we have Amiya class and Fusha class together, my, my language center, that's how they, they arrange our, our lessons. So mm. uh, I think there's, some, there's still some rules in Amiya and you can, a, a bit similar to standard Arabic. So... Mm. It's a bit difficult to adjust in the beginning, but after you are used to it, I think it's 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 okay. Yeah, mm. yeah. And because I I think uh, Amiya in Egypt, they they didn't have too many uh, so-called foreign language in it. For for example, if you went to Lebanon, maybe there's a lot of French in their Amiya, mm. or 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 Tunisian. There's a lot of French in Amiya, but I think uh, Egypt is it's most of the part is still Arabic. Yeah. I see. I yeah, see. Yeah. 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 Mm. And I, I also I also met a, a a Muslim girl who went there for religion for a religious purpose. She's yes. from Malaysia, and she studied oh. in, in the same language center like me. Right, so, right. Mm, yeah. Now, have you met other people like yourself from Taiwan? Did you cross paths with 
anyone else from Taiwan who was there to study Arabic? Uh, because my my department was the only Arabic department in Taiwan, so I went there with part uh, some of my classmates. Like we are like a Taiwanese group, and we went there to learn the language. Yeah. And uh, w- may I ask, what was your family's reaction to this? Because <laughs> I know that, uh, like, even with Muslims, including some young yeah. Muslims who want to study abroad mm. and they want to study Islam abroad, sometimes their parents and their families can be quite hesitant and yeah. concerned, and yeah. and that concern is there for for good reason. But mm. I mean, how did your family feel? Did they find it uh, was it odd? Was it strange that you were going to uh. actually go to Egypt and study, or or you know, were they happy about this? Did they think it's it's a it's a really cool idea? Uh, I think most of all they concerned about the safety issue. Yeah, and uh, after I tried to uh, learn some situation from my teacher or some friends, mm-hmm. and I I told my parents about what what they said about Egypt. So they they feel more relief and they try to accept it. Yeah, and because after I went there, I share a lot of experience with them, so they think it's quite interesting too. Yeah. Can I ask you what were some of your your good and your bad experiences? Anything that yeah. you want to share, or if you only want to share good, go ahead. If you only want to complain, <laughs> if there's if there's an interesting bad story, that's fine. Uh, go ahead and uh, share it. At least it prepares people for what they might expect if if they were to uh, go and study yeah. abroad. I think I think in in Egypt because I only that that's the only Arabic country I've been to Egypt so I I can only talk about the situation in Egypt yes, but I yes. think in Egypt it's because there the tourism there is very prosperous yeah, so yeah. so uh in 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 tourist area and outside tourist area the situation is very different because. Mm. At in tourist era, you you will have many bad experience like, uh, like sp- uh, scam. Like they they try to steal your money or they they use uh two different menu, one Arabic yes. menu and English menu and two different totally prices. Yeah, yeah, things yeah, like yeah, that. yeah, right. Yes. So it it will makes you feel bad, but but yeah. if you went outside of that, I think most of the most of the people are very friendly and they are very willing to help you. Yes, yes. Yeah, and yes. I mean, remember, Egypt is also the most populous Arab yeah, uh, country. Yeah, and yeah, yeah, yeah. whenever there's a big population, there's going to mm. be more everything. There's going to be more pollution. There will yeah. be more yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. social but, problems in the yeah. big cities. Yeah, yeah. but but for me, it's, it's really quite interesting because that's a... a if if you don't like it, people think it's a cha- chaotic country. Like yeah. when 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 I was there, I I only seen one one or two traffic lights in in my whole ten months stay. But but actually, everyone has so, some sort of rules that by them by their own. You you yes, understand? Yes. <laughs> so yeah. I think it's really interesting, and it it gives me some sort of sense of freedom sometimes. Like. You you don't you don't need these rules. Many things you can just let it go, and and things will go through still. Yeah, it's funny that you looked at it that way. It's funny yeah. that that was that was your comment because <laughs> I say that all the time. Whenever mm. people in the West are always talking about freedom, freedom, liberty, freedom, I yeah. say, listen, man, you won't get more freedom than in Pakistan. If you <laughs> want to wear a seatbelt, wear a seatbelt. You don't yeah, want to yeah, wear yeah. a seatbelt, don't wear it. You want to wear a helmet on the on the motorcycle? Wear it. You don't want to wear it? It's okay. Don't wear yeah. it. So yeah, yeah. in some ways, <laughs> there's a lot of freedom. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but uh, uh, I know. I mean, I, I I spent some time in Syria. You know, mm, before the uh, uh, before the war. Yeah. Uh, I now, heard unfortunately, it's a really good place to learn. Oh yeah, things. yeah. Because yeah. again, it, it had a smaller population, yeah. so yeah, people are following the traffic lights, mm. and it's much more orderly. <laughs> There's yeah, less yeah. pollution, yeah. Um, especially before the war. Like the everything mm. was very good. Like yeah. the garbage collection, the streets are clean. Yeah, uh, that's what was, I heard. Yeah, mm. yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So, h- how were your uh, translated books, the books you you yeah. translated into Chinese? Mm. How were they received by the mm. uh, uh, in yeah. Taiwan and uh, if you know beyond Taiwan, if you got any feedback mm. on those books? 
I uh because I only translate the book, so I I. I asked I asked my editor before this interview, and he because he he edited this book and he do the marketing and stuff. So he think because he he published some other other books about Islam too.、Mm. Many many Taiwanese people they are curious about Islam about this religion. They feel like they they don't really know about this and. They they want to they want to know more about what's happening now. So that that's when people are started to curious about Islam. I think after that that uh period, there there are many books started to publish like translated books. Yeah, and uh also because there are many uh Indonesian im immigrant workers in in Taiwan. So uh most of them are Muslims. So now they're they're like they they have their own mosque or prayer room in in Taiwan. So that that part also uh like they 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 it's it's part of Taiwan's daily life now, sort of. Yeah, so yeah. so people want to know more about Islam. He he said he can feel he can feel that people are curious about and they want to know, and also he think he. He got some review from the uh from the Islamic uh from Muslim community in Taiwan because、mm. we have some local Muslims too, and、yes. because a、uh, long time they are they are misunderstood or especially uh women Muslim because、mm. they sometimes they wear hijab and people don't know what that is or、mm. they think it's a repression to women. Mm. So, so、uh, they they really want to explain these these、uh, religion to average Taiwanese people. So、mm. he he really feels that this these books can help people to understand more about Islam and、uh, like things are getting better be、mm. than before. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah, and and you're playing a positive role in that. So again, thank you, thank you、yeah. for for doing that. <laughs> uh. If I can ask a couple of questions about Taiwan, I,、yeah. I didn't tell you earlier, but、um, I, I lived in Taiwan as well too for fifteen months. Yeah, yeah, fifteen <laughs> months. Yes, yeah,、um, uh. yeah. I can show you photographs afterwards. But I,、um, yeah, for for we we for one school year, we were teaching young Taiwanese children English. It、oh, was in、uh, okay. Taipei. Yeah, yeah, it was yeah, in Taipei. Yeah, yeah. I live in Taipei.、Too. Yeah, in fact,、yeah. it was a suburb of. Taipei, you would know、uh. it. It's called Tu Cheng. Oh Tu Cheng. yeah, yeah, I know. Yeah, I know. yeah, Tu、oh, Cheng.、Cool. Yeah, so we're teaching little <laughs> Taiwanese kids. Ah,、uh, they, they were so cute. Like I, <laughs> that was almost twenty years ago. So I wonder what they look、oh, like now. Oh, yeah. oh wow! But yeah. it was a very good experience. But unfortunately, unlike you, I don't、mm. have a skill or a knack for languages. So、mm. I didn't.、Uh, and we were in an English bubble because yeah, in the English yeah, schools. Yeah, yeah. They ex they expect even the Chinese teachers to speak、uh, English with each other. Yeah. yeah. So we didn't have much opportunity to learn、uh, Chinese, and and I'm ashamed to say that after 15 months there, I know only three four words. You、yeah. know, I know hi, bye. <laughs> Don't be ashamed. I know thank you. Because because、yeah. I I think that that's a, a sort of a, an issue for Taiwanese people. Like they feel like when they 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 saw foreigners, they have to speak English. And、yeah. they they try to use English to communicate with you. Yes. But that that's what I feel sometimes. What I feel in Egypt too. Like when I speak Arabic, and people will use、yes. English to answer me. Yes. But yes. actually, I can understand for foreigners. It especially when you are learning the local language, you really hope that someone can talk to you yes, with local yes, language yes, and yes, try to、yeah. uh, give you some time to. Yes. <laughs> and yes. You can I understand. But. I I don't think Taiwanese people have this this habit, like, and 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 also they they assume all foreigners can speak English. <laughs> right, right, yeah. yeah so, uh, yeah, I think. Yeah, still, it's it's you know, it's it's still you know my fault. I still take responsibility <laughs>、oh, okay. for it.、Uh, I didn't you know I didn't make much of an effort, but、um, uh, okay,、yeah. I, I mean I'm but you know actually I met so many、uh, Indians and Pakistanis there、mm. who. And, 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 like they spoke fluent Chinese, and、oh, I was—I、really? yeah. I couldn't understand. I like how 
they mm. did it after only mm. five six years there are some of them but one thing that helped is many of them had like a chinese wife <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so whereas i had a british pakistani wife so yeah, that could be another yeah. reason but yeah. one of the words i learned which helped me a lot because yeah. i needed it every friday um oh. i got time off for my for the friday prayer for the oh. juma juma prayer yeah, yeah and as you might know taipei has one very large yeah. uh, mosque yeah so but i didn't have time usually to take the the mrt or yeah. the subway because my time was very short so i would take a taxi and i would just tell the taxi driver ching jin si yeah you know? <laughs> ching jin si and always they knew exactly which one like yeah, they said yeah. oh ching jin si and yeah. i said yeah and yeah. they would take me directly there. Oh. So, so have you been to that uh, large? Uh, yeah, 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 I forget yeah, the address, I, but I went there several times. It's it. You you mean the one that's that's next to? Uh, it's across a big park, right? Yes, yeah. It's yeah, across yeah, from yeah. a big park. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I remember during Eid, everyone spilled out into that park. Yeah, they yeah, were just yeah, hanging yeah. out. Yes, yeah, yes, yeah, yeah. I remember yeah. that. Yeah, I, I've so, been there several times. Yeah. Now that mosque has when I was there, like that yeah. was eighteen years ago. That mm. it had two Chinese imams. Yeah, uh, th- yeah, they were Chinese imams, and mm. the khutbah was in Arabic and Chinese. Yeah. And uh, I mean, I want to ask you a little bit about Taiwan Taiwanese Muslims, not the yeah. Indonesian or the yeah. uh, immigrant workers, but Understood. the more indigenous Taiwanese mm. Muslims. Yeah. They are, I think, mostly from the mainland China. It, yeah. It's, it, I, from what I remember, yeah, most yeah. of them came from the mainland China. Uh, when communism took over the mainland yeah <laughs> and i think it was so, so dur- during know, the well, time of Ch- uh, chiang uh, chiang kai shek yeah, yeah 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 it was yeah. during that time that they came yeah, to taiwan because yeah. there uh, at that time there civil war beco- between yes. communist and guomindang we we call it kmt yeah right, right, and right, KMT, kmt is is like the the party the political party of of chiang kai shek yeah. Mm, yeah, right. so because they 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 lost so they they they, they sort of retreat to Taiwan. Yes. And yes. and at that time there are, there are many people uh Im- immigrants from from China to Taiwan. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So so at that time there are many uh Muslim mm. in, at at that that period. I I have two questions so, about mm. the situation there of of yeah, the okay. Muslims in Taiwan. So one is that why is it that uh, that early community? Now I understand th- mm. there have been immigrants who have who have come into yeah. Taiwan now or students, but that early community of Muslims in Taiwan. Mm. Why is it that they were mostly uh, migrants from China? Why were there not indigenous Taiwanese Muslims? Like like mm. China has had mm. Muslims there for yeah. a thousand years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So were there not any older communities before yeah. the nineteen thirties in yeah. Taiwan? Actually, there are, and most of them are are uh, uh, businessmen, bis- like business family, because they they have connection from from outside, from some foreign countries. Uh, that that was long time ago, like maybe Ming Dynasty. <laughs> oh, okay, okay. Yeah, yeah, that was long We're time going ago. Back, but yeah, hundreds yeah, of years. Ago. But because when they live in Taiwan for a long time, they their their uh, Muslim tradition fade away yes from from time to uh during time so so at at uh and the 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 more uh recent history they they don't they don't practice islam that that much mm. so so actually they're they're from muslim family and we know some last name that they they might came from muslim family mm. but actually they they are not practicing muslim I, mm. I think you understand. That. Yeah, yeah, I understand very yeah, clearly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And in fact, that was going to be my second question, which mm. is that even with the Muslims who came from the mainland China, yeah, what I noticed while I was there is that there were not many young Chinese Muslims practicing, you know, in the mosque. Uh, it was it was older uh, people. Yeah. And it seems like by the third generation or fourth yeah. generation they had kind of many of them it seems they had yeah, stopped yeah, practicing yeah. so you know why is that and uh, do you think that trend can be mm. reversed do you think that can be mm. changed uh i i think i think it's because uh islam is not a majority religion in taiwan so when young people there they try to 
fit in the local life. They they have to because Islam is a is a religion that very close to life, like from from your food, from your you have to pray. So there there's many when, when I, I think I think when when they are trying to fit into local life, they they have their own choice. Like maybe some some people make friends they are non-Muslim. So mm. when they are trying to <laughs> hang out with them, so things change. But uh, as far as I know, like the Muslim, the Taiwanese Muslim I know, my my friends, uh, most of the practicing Muslim are those who. Like they they newly how do you say like they 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 be, they became Muslim when when yes. they when for example when they went to foreign country and study yeah, and right, they right. knew about Islam so yeah. they converted yeah converted, converted yes yeah yes. yeah yeah so yeah. most of the practicing Muslim are converted. Muslim, as I know. Yeah. Now yeah. it's funny you brought up that word converted, yeah. <laughs> Be- because <laughs> as yeah. you know, I was uh, I was uh, asking you if I would be yeah. able to ask you about um, like so beyond the Arabic language, beyond the Arabic culture. Yeah. So beyond your academic interest in this subject, how much of this is also like a, a personal or a spiritual uh. interest? Uh, what have your impressions of Islam been? Uh. Uh, you know, what are your feelings about Islam? What yeah. is your response to Islam? Yeah. <laughs> Do you see yourself as a Muslim or uh, maybe not quite or uh, or maybe not uh, yet? So if you're uh, comfortable sharing any of those yeah. thoughts with the mm. audience, we'd, we'd uh, appreciate that. Yeah, uh, I, I, I've never converted to Islam before. Yeah, but uh, because I, I, I learned this language and this language is closely related to Islam, of course. And so I learned about the culture and when I went to Egypt, like I I really like this Islamic culture, like because I can really feel that it's is uh closely related to the day, daily life of Muslim. And it's it's very different from Taiwan. Like Taiwan in, in Taiwan the the folk religion it doesn't play that much big part of people's life like like islam yeah mm. so at that time i can like uh rationally i i appreciate the beauty of it and i know the there are many values i admired from islam for example peace and uh equal and yeah yeah so i i can understand uh there there are many uh beautiful part about this religion but uh, I think uh, also I I have some converted Muslim friends, right? I think uh, converted Muslim had has to had some sort of uh, spiritual experience that there might be some sort of event that makes you want to convert it, and that experience is not only it 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 does not only depend on rational understanding, like. I think that's uh some some sort of emotional part. I'm not sure if that's a right word, but or more of the spiritual experience. Mm. And uh until now that 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 experience didn't happen on me yet. Mm. So uh yeah, so, <laughs> so Yeah, no, no, that's a very good answer. Time, I, yeah, at this time I I I I I, I'm not converted, but I'm I'm not sure about the future because inshallah. I think this yeah inshallah, inshallah because I think this this issue is not that I I consider about being Muslim and I will become it I I, I don't know how how to say it but because for me that's that's a a more spiritual thing like you cannot explain it you you cannot like it's not like a future plan like for after three months i want to become muslim i think you can understand what i mean yes yeah, yes yeah. no i can understand i can appreciate yeah, yeah, that yeah. i i think you explained it very well that mm. uh, like for you conversion should not be only based on rational considerations mm. but you know uh, like a spiritual movement in the heart as well too yeah. uh and all, all, i mean the I would just give a very simple advice, which I've given mm. to other people in the past too, okay. which is that there's no harm in simply, you know, 
praying and uh, I don't mean now yeah. here, but yeah, I mean yeah, on yeah. your own time. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. You know, just praying to God, right? Praying mm. to Allah and saying, yeah. Allah, that if if this is your way of life, if this is mm. your prescribed way of life, if this is your religion, if this is the correct path, mm. then please make it easy for me and guide mm. me to this, you know? Mm. And if it's yeah. wrong, if it's bad, if it's harmful, then keep me away from it, you know? Yeah. So there's no harm in yeah. praying that. And remember right. that these spiritual signs and experiences, it's also based on how you see things and how you interpret yeah. things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because, yeah, because yeah. yeah, at the end of the day, um, it, it, you know, probably it's not going to happen that the clouds, you're going to see your name in the clouds and it's going to say, Shuru, <laughs> yeah. become Muslim yeah, today. I know, I <laughs> yeah, know. It's not, it probably won't be that uh, yeah. dramatic. Yeah. yeah. But inshallah, inshallah. I appreciate yeah. you sharing that with us. Yeah, Thank you. Yeah. Thank you very I, much. Uh, I, I would like to tell you one little story please, <laughs> about please. me. <laughs> yeah, because uh, like I, actually my ex boyfriend is Muslim. Okay. Yeah, and uh, mm, but I uh like so, like because some some people in Taiwan because they have to marry Muslim, so they become Muslim. But okay. for me, I I don't want to do that because. I feel like I, if I want to become Muslim, I have to. Mm. It's from my heart, not yes. because it's from my marriage. Yes, yeah, 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 yeah. Yes, yeah. Yes. So, but but at that time when I was uh like uh during our 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 relationship, there there's one time that make really makes me feel the the power of this religion. Like it's it's there there's one time uh there's some sort of a bird or a pigeon died mm. in the middle of the sidewalk and we, we were walking on on the the sideway mm. like we were just walking on the road and we saw we saw that pigeon and because it's in the middle of the way so i i like we we tried to remove it from 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 where people were walking and we we tried to bury it but there's no suitable place around it yeah but at that time because uh Mm, that's a really direct uh you 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 face death very directly when you saw that body of mm. bird and at that time when i saw that bird because it got hurt or something so i feel emotional like i feel really sad about it and mm. and at that time my 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 boyfriend he he started to pray for that pigeon and he said that uh, I I forgot the exact words, but he the like the 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 things he said that he that that Allah will protect you and mm -hmm. he will, he will take you to some place better things like that. And when I heard his prayer, I really feel very soothing in my heart. Mm -hmm. Yes. So at that time, I really feel that this this is part of the religion that it can give me some power to face mm, different situation in the life yeah yeah, yeah. definitely definitely yeah. so that that might be my the closest experience of my to to that yeah i had taken the course once on islamic philosophy at the university yeah. of toronto I, I remember almost nothing from that course by the way but there's one no really but there's mm. one very very useful uh thing that i remember the professor's name was michael marmura yeah. Uh, and so like you, he was someone who had not formally converted to Islam. Yeah. I hope he did before he died. But mm. so he was culturally, he was Palestinian a Christian, mm. oh, but he was yeah. very, very sympathetic to Islam, very yeah. sympathetic and very yeah. inclined mm. towards Islam. Mm. He taught Islam with a lot of, uh, you know, love and a lot of, you know, passion. Yeah. And uh, at that time, I didn't know any Arabic at all. Uh, you know, now I know a bit. At that time, I didn't know any at all. So, and uh, on more than one occasion, uh, he would recite this verse from the Quran, and uh, he would say, "The you know, in the Quran, he he would say, there's one verse in the Quran.' You have to imagine this old, uh, elderly mm. man with a lot of yeah. wrinkles on his yeah. eyes and forehead, and he'd say, "There's one verse in the Quran. It strikes me every time I read it. It's very profound. Allah bi dhikrillahi tatmainul kulub." And uh, I would be waiting for him to translate it because, as I said, I didn't uh, understand mm. even the Quran at that time. Yeah. So then he would translate it. And, it, you know, it means that 
is it not by the dhikr of Allah? Is it not by mm. the remembrance of God that yeah. hearts find rest? Yeah. You know? mm. So yeah. maybe that's what happened to you when you saw that dead pigeon yeah. and your boyfriend, yeah. you know, yeah. mentioned Allah made a prayer. It's it's when we remember our creator mm. that our hearts find rest. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So on a related note of <laughs> these um, kind of little spiritual experiences. Yeah. Uh, what was your experience when visiting the mosques in Egypt? Because yeah. I'm sure that mm. you visited, yeah. and I'm I'm sure that you visited not only as a tourist, but you might uh. have spent some time there, and you might have mm. sat there. I I imagine. Yeah, yeah, I imagine. Yeah. What was yeah. your experience of that? Mm, like because, uh, like what I said, that like before I went to Egypt, all of this uh, Islamic cultural knowledge is from my my course in in university but when i in egypt everything become mm, alive yeah and before we we always heard that a uh, mosque is not only a, a praying class place it's not only a religious place it's also uh, a place for education and and in egypt i saw people rest there just chatting that it's also a uh, mm, a place you can go there, hang out with your friends. It, and it I, would be sorry to cut you off, yeah. but it it would be very strange, right? If you walked into a church and you saw somebody just sleeping on the ground, yeah. like <laughs> yeah. Yeah. you would think he had a heart attack and maybe yeah, yeah, he died. Yeah. Right? Yeah. But in the mosque, it's very common, right? Yeah, People yeah, sleep. yeah, yeah. <laughs> and and also because I went to the uh, I I forgot I forgot the name the the oldest. The oldest uh, mosque Al in, in Al Azhar is it? Al yeah, 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 Azhar, Azhar, yeah, Azhar. The and oldest because, university. Yeah, complex. yeah, 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 yes, yeah, yes, yeah. Yes. And at that time, when there, there's one time I went there, and there's there were so many people studying the studying in the mosque, and it's it's just like because in Taiwan we have some sort of uh, a, a a center that when when students are preparing for exam they can go there and just prepare and study and i i saw that in in us hut but it, it was in the mosque and every people everyone just sitting on the ground and and preparing for their exam because i think at that time it's during their midterm mm. yeah so i think that's really interesting for me and i also saw teacher really teaching in in mosque yeah and i also and saw uh animals like cats or they they will and they will enter mm. mosque and wow. i think they they feel they feel easy to at at yeah. that at in that area so yeah it's it's very different from we thought about for example like church like yes. it's it's not a a place that you have to sit quite well and very serious place just just like what you say that that's where people live and and yes. hang out and yeah and uh, as you were saying off the camera like you know yeah. islam is a flexible religion as well too yeah. so for elderly people for handicapped people who are not able to sit on the ground yeah. then then you can place chairs there people yeah. can sit on chairs and pray yeah. uh, and that's the case with my own mother who's elderly mm. so she she doesn't fast during ramadan yeah. and when she prays she sits and she prays mm. etc yeah. Uh, I'm not sure if you're aware, but during the time of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, they even used to do like martial arts training, like in the mosque, you know, like wrestling. Oh, really? oh, oh yeah, yeah. They I used to know. wrestle and they used to uh, fight in the mosque. Yeah, yeah in the mosque. Yeah. And it it was, you know, it was no problem. It was yeah. uh, it was a healthy skill that they yeah. were developing, you know. In yeah, the yeah. So on this note of how Islam integrates itself into practical life. You know, it integrates yeah. itself. Yeah. Um, how how is Islam different from the dominant like Taiwanese culture mm. or religions? Like yeah. when I was there, I uh, again I didn't learn much, but I know mm. that Taoism I think was yeah, one of the yeah, main. Yeah, yeah Taoism yeah. was one of the main um, religious traditions. Mm. And as you said, I, I could not see. Um, but maybe I missed it. But I mm. I could not see how. Taiwanese people were integrating like religion into their mm. everyday life but yeah. once in a while like we would see that there's some kind of religious festival happening yeah, yeah. <laughs> there, there was one festival where they would hang like fake money 
Am I right? Would they not hang uh, fake money? Yeah, from... maybe. Maybe. Yeah. yeah. So, anyhow, is there anything you want to yeah. tell us? Uh, are, are there, are, aside from the differences, are, are, yeah. are there any similarities? Is there anything mm. similar or is it completely different? Mm. Yeah, because uh, for the religion part, uh, although it's, it's uh, we call it Taoism, but it's, it's some, like it has some um, character of Taiwan after it, 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 uh, it, it came, like, our our sometimes we say folk religion in in, yeah, in, China, so. in Mandarin we say folk religion and mm. because in Taiwan folk religion they they uh they merge uh Taoism and Buddhism together like it's like you you cannot separate it mm. that much and I I know I I believe there are some very uh devoted believers they 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 they. they like maybe some some people work in the temple like their their daily life are closely related to religion but i think average people like for example like me like uh my my grandma is a buddhist but uh i only went went to the temple with her like she she told me to pray and i will pray things like that yeah so and or or at some time is that for example you are having a lot of bad luck in your life recently, and you feel you you everything in your life is a mess. And at that time, people will think of religion and they will go to temple and pray. Or for example, they are facing a, an important exam, or they want to find a job, they want to find a wife, they want to have a kid. Like I I think it's a more uh purpose like they they have some sort of purpose and mm. they 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 will they will try to find help in religion mm. it's it's more like like this so nice. uh it's i think this this part is very different from islam mm. but uh there's one part i i think it's very similar but i'm i'm not sure it's a taiwanese culture or we, we are we are affected by the folk religion too it's uh some sort of like like the charity tradition because in in islam they they you you have things like zakat and uh for example when in when it's eid adha you have to give some part of your your meat to to people those those are they are, they need it things like that and I think there's a very strong uh, charity tradition in Taiwan too. Like we we really like to help people when 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 something happens. Like for example, uh, some serious earthquake happened in Japan or things like that, and people like to donate money a lot. Mm. That that's what Taiwanese people love to do, yeah. Even even in China, because you know our relationship with China is a bit sensitive, mm. yeah. Because uh, some 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 Taiwanese people we want to we want independent, yeah. So uh, <laughs> but but China China keep using military threat towards us. Mm. Yeah, but even even at the time when they, there there's a serious earthquake in happened in China, people still oh. try to help. Yeah. Oh, that's good. That's yeah. Good. So I think that's uh, a part. I think it's a bit similar mm. in these two culture. Yeah. Mm. When you mentioned uh, China, I just wanted to share with you. I don't know yeah. if if you can see. Uh, do you see that frame up there? Yeah. That's actually a map of the uh the mosque in xian china oh, really yeah oh. the good the great You've mosque been there in, before? in xian yes yes that's where i bought the map from yeah. yeah so that 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 was a good experience and also yeah. um i went to a city called guangchao in china mm. guangchao okay. uh. um i should have looked this up before our interview to make sure i don't get the yeah. details wrong but from what i remember it, it it's it's um uh well no it it was not 2 hours from taiwan i think it was 2 hours from hong kong but uh, one of the uncles one of the uncles of the prophet yeah. is buried there in guangzhou uh, oh, yeah okay. yeah I, I i believe his name was saad ibn abi waqas he's oh, one of the uncles okay. of the prophet yeah. and he's buried there yeah. so um you know for for those who would think that islam is culturally 
far away from China, from Hong Kong, from Taiwan. Well, well you know, this is one yeah. of our most important people buried in yeah, uh, China. Yeah, and, yeah. and that's how far Islam goes back, you know, mm, in China. Yeah. Um, com- coming back to Taiwan, yeah. I-, I remember now that um, a couple of the teachers, a couple of the Chinese teachers, mm. they would ask me and my wife about things like, just about her hijab and mm. why I go on the for the Friday prayer mm. and why we don't eat pork. I mean, in a nice way, they were just yeah. we had nice conversations. Yeah. yeah, and I still remember like one of them said to me like, "Why?" <laughs> I'm not making this up. I'm telling you the truth. Yeah. She said like, "Why aren't you guys like you Muslims and Jan? Why aren't you sharing this message of Islam with mm. the people here?" Mm. Because people here would really like this message. Mm, mm, and yeah. I feel bad now that I, I spent a year there in Taiwan and I didn't really talk about mm, Islam, to be honest with you. I wasn't mm, really like uh, sharing Islam with people mm, or anything like that. But she said like, you know, people would really like this. And I think she's right because it it seemed to me like life is very, very busy in Taiwan. Like mm, it just it's just very kind of... Um, it's just study, 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 <laughs> yeah. just work, work, work. You know, these poor little kids that I was teaching English to, I felt sorry for them. They're so cute. Because after they finished with us, after, you know, seven, eight hours with us, then they'd go for Chinese language classes. Yeah. Yeah. And I used, to, I used to ask, why do they need Chinese language classes? They know how to speak Chinese. But, you know, they have to know how to write properly and read and yeah. this and that. And then some of them would go for, like, piano classes yeah. and... And sometimes they don't have time to eat. That's why they're like eating noodles on the street. Yeah. Uh, it's just a very busy lifestyle. And I yeah. think, you know, you need some spiritual breathing space. You need mm. time to slow down. Mm. And as you said, because Islam can be incorporated into everyday life, Islam yeah. doesn't say, you know, quit your work and quit your school. Yeah. Don't work. Go and live in a cave somewhere mm. and just worship Allah. Yeah. No, no, no. I mean, you know, you should live your life, have your family life. Uh but take a five minute break and yeah, your yeah. prayers, you know, remember Allah, reconnect yeah. with Allah. Mm. Um, so, yeah, what did you I, think? I mean, mm. is, is it very busy or is it only because I came from Canada and I'm comparing mm. it and I found <laughs> it like different, you know? Yeah, I, I think it's, it's very busy and mm, like it's, it's uh, competitive maybe yeah or at, the, at least people think they have to be competitive mm, yeah. yeah so mm, uh, that that makes me think of my own experience of fasting like i've tried fasting once mm. for like maybe 20 days okay. yeah and uh but but it, it it was like maybe four or five years ago and uh, at that time before because uh, like people have some sort of way to explain why you fast in 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 Islam like people will say that uh, you have to experience what poor people feel like because you you, you know how they you know how the need, needy people feel and so you you you, you will have the um, uh, compassion to them things like that but Mm, at that time, I really feel that because uh, you are fasting and uh, you 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 sometimes you feel tired. Mm. I think I I feel tired more than hungry or thirsty, mm. and so at that time your your uh, body or your mental your mind will switch into a different mode. Mm. Like it, everything will s- slow down a bit. And at that time, I really think that you you have more time uh, other than work or uh, you you can you can think of spiritual things and yes. think of your relationship with God more because uh, your your body is is different from what you you are usually like. And yes. I I thought I think prayer might might be some sort of similar function I, mm. I don't know i'm sorry i i maybe my word is not that no precise, you're very clear but, very clear yeah yeah so i i i can really understand what what you mean like uh, in in your daily life you have to take some time away from those busy things 
Yeah. 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 And yeah. and don't don't think that it's only um challenging for you. Uh yeah. like I mean like that is the point. I mean it it, it is uh, challenging. Mm, um yeah. but it, it's doable though. It's doable. Yeah. yeah. But but it is challenging and uh yeah, I mean uh, I experienced that weakness uh, during yeah. Ramadan and uh you know even the prayers the the prayers mm. sometimes it can be very enjoyable. Mm. Uh but s- sometimes it can be difficult as well no. too. So yeah, by the way, I think like we're almost done. Just five minutes yeah. or so. Is it okay? Yeah. yeah. Thank you so yeah. much. Thank you. I, I want to ask you some questions too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Later. Go, ahead. Go ahead. Okay, okay. <laughs> Don't make it too difficult. You can speak. Yeah. <laughs> no, <it's not. laughs> yeah. Mm. Oh, you want me to ask now? You can ask me first. Yeah. yeah. And, well, uh, I mean, yeah. I was just gonna ask if, by any chance, yeah. have you had any correspondence with Karen Armstrong, or uh, uh, have you ever met her? She, uh, I, I'm sure you know that she's a very well-known yeah. author on yeah. the topic of religion in the West. Mm, you can yeah. go into any bookstore in Canada, yeah. and there will be books by Karen yeah. Armstrong. Sadly, I I don't have any personal connection with her. But actually, uh, before I translate her book, just like you said, because she's a very important uh, scholar in about in this field. So, uh, when when I was in in university, I already I already read her her autobiography on Prophet Muhammad, mm-hmm. and uh, uh, but it was an earlier version. I so see. at that time, when I got this job that I I can translate the newer version, it also means a lot to me because, mm. uh, before like many years ago, I also learned from her 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 books to know about uh Prophet Muhammad about his life and his story. Yeah. Yes. And yeah. I I really like the way she wrote about uh Prophet Muhammad because, uh, it's more uh down to earth. The way she she wrote, like, uh, you you won't feel that uh, Prophet Muhammad is a really far. It is is really far from you, or you you can you can really feel that relate he, relatable. Yeah, 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 relatable. And mm. he's also a a human just like you and me. Mm. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, I really like the way she she. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and so, and what are your future plans? Do you have any other uh, projects? Are there any other uh, books on Islam that you're, you mm. know, in the process of translating? Mm. For for now, no. But uh, I'm open to any possible. <laughs> like mm. because some sometimes they will have some like speech invitation. They will ask me to share about Islamic culture or. Hijab because I I was really interested in, in this issue when I was in Egypt, mm. yeah. And so so sometimes I have I will have these uh speech of these topic, mm. like invitation sometimes. But yeah, but not 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 any specific plans. No, yeah. Okay, excellent, yeah, yeah. excellent. So yeah, shoot away your questions. Anything you oh, wanted to okay. uh, ask me, please feel free. Yeah. Uh, so uh you you are you are born a muslim right yes Oh, yeah, okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. I, uh, I kind of half jokingly say, don't take everything I say seriously, <laughs> okay. right? But I, I half jokingly say that sometimes, sometimes I kind of yeah. wish I had an exciting conversion story to share with people. <laughs> you know, I, 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 part of me, part of me wishes I could kind of yeah. tell you that. Yeah, I used to be a gang member. Uh, I was an atheist. I went to jail for five years. <laughs> And then you know, then I discovered Islam, and it changed my yeah. life and all that. But yeah. the truth is much more bland, and yeah. uh, which is that yes, I was born in a Muslim family. My parents are originally from Pakistan. Oh, they came okay. to Canada okay. in the 1960s. Uh, um, and yeah, I so I was I was raised in a Muslim Ooh. family. However, yeah. living in a non-Muslim society, yeah. uh, of course, I was forced to always kind of uh, question and. Uh, like look at my beliefs and rationally yeah. analyze and scrutinize yeah. my beliefs. And so now as an adult, of course, I reaffirm Islam for myself. You know, yeah. it's not simply something that I've adopted from my family. Mm, it's something yeah. that I choose and I reaffirm for myself. Yeah, yeah. So I, I was curious about because uh, just before we talk about like younger Muslim in Taiwan, I said when they try to fit into non-Muslim life, they yes. sort of change a bit. Yes. So I, I'm curious about why you can still 
insist this this religion or this way of life yes, in, in yes. a, a non-Muslim community. Yeah. Yeah. Well, first, uh, first of all, of course, Alhamdulillah, right? Like yeah. Hidayah is from Allah. Guidance mm. is from God, you know. Yeah. So I, I, I thank God, you know, I'm, I'm here because of his, you know, guidance and his grace. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, it, it's challenging here, too. Uh, there are many mm. youth that lose their way because yeah. because of not because of political pressures so much as mm. just social pressures. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, Islam, as you know, does not agree with many of the ideas that are mm. in Western liberalism mm. today. Mm. There are some understand. tensions. Yeah. There are some differences. And when those differences come up, some people, uh, they cave in under the pressure and they uh, go the wrong way. Mm -hmm. um, so for me, uh, like there were a few influences in my life. You know, mm -hmm. uh, one was uh, I don't know if you've heard of Sheikh Ahmed Didat. Uh, no. I'll I'll, no. I'll yeah. type it for you. Okay. Sheikh Ahmed Didat. Yeah. Um, okay. There's a film which is a really great film. You should watch Malcolm mm -hmm. X. Have you seen mm -hmm. the film Malcolm X? No. Oh, watch. I know. The I know Malcolm X. But yeah. I, I, yeah. Watch the 1992 film, the 1992 okay. film, Malcolm okay. X. Yeah. Okay. So I saw that in the cinema. When I went in the cinema, I was a different person. When I came out, I was a different person. I yeah. Was like, wow. No. So that, that film. And then good friends. I had some good friends. Mm. And maybe my parents' prayers, uh, you know, my parents' prayers, you know, helped yeah. out. So, um, but yeah, it is a challenge here too. Yeah. It is, mm. a, it is a challenge everywhere. Faith mm. is uh, under pressure everywhere. Yeah. Know? Yeah. Uh, in so, some places, mm it's more political pressure like mm. in the mainland China mm. but then in other places it's the social pressures mm. of yeah, freedom yeah. and you know doing whatever you want to do freedom yeah. presents a different kind of challenge yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. freedom <laughs> presents this. a different kind of challenge yeah yeah, yeah. sure oh uh, so so uh I, I'm curious about like uh for example are are you close to Pakistanian community or the 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 community you are familiar with is more of Muslim. It, uh, uh, yeah, I'm I'm both, I'm pretty in both. touch with my yeah I'm pretty in touch with my yeah. Pakistani culture, uh, Pakistani food, and mm. you know my wife is also like British Pakistani, so oh, she was born okay. in England, but her parents yeah. are from Pakistan. Yeah, so that might have helped. It might have helped mm. that I stayed um, connected with my you know ethnic uh, mm. culture yeah and because my culture like because pakistan is 97 percent, 98 percent muslim yeah uh, that does help that does help yeah, yeah. Mm. so i mean that's one piece of advice i could give to muslim immigrants is that mm. for example indonesian immigrants to taiwan yeah, yeah. It, it might help their children if they make sure that their children can also speak Indonesian. Yeah. Because if they stay in touch with their language and their culture, their language and culture is so intertwined mm. with Islam. Yeah. That it will help them uh, preserve their religion too. Mm. Inshallah. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. So, so do you think? Uh, do 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 you live in Toronto since you were little? Yes, or... my whole yeah, pretty much my whole life. Uh... Yeah, I, I mean, I like I said, I lived in Taiwan mm. for one year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I yeah. lived in England for three years, but yeah, yeah Toronto is my home base. Oh, uh, okay. Uh, oh, here's one more thing that might yeah. help Muslims in Canada, which yeah. is that in Canada, multiculturalism is an official yeah, policy. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah but that's, that's an official, as you know, from I Taiwan want, Fest. I'm curious yeah. about yeah. So I'm sure that Taiwan Fest, which is what you came for in mm. Vancouver, I'm sure yeah. Taiwan Fest get some subsidies or funding from the federal government something mm. so yeah the canadian government kind of tries to promote multiculturalism mm. and so if you watch cbc news for example yeah. one of the main news anchors mm. uh, is a lady in hijab yeah right? i i think i read about her story yeah when I was um up. and yeah. like canadian tv programs mm. will try try to have like a muslim character in it mm. or a lady with a hijab yeah. or something like that so this might help mm. uh some young muslims i'm not young anymore but this <laughs> this might help some of the muslims who are born and raised in canada mm. to mm. be more proud of their muslim mm. heritage mm. serve their religion but remember, I mean, the religion is more than just 
these exterior things. It's yeah, more than just yeah. the Muslim name. Yeah. It's more than just a hijab. It's a, it's yeah. about your deeply held values yeah. and yeah. beliefs. So mm. that is still a challenge, you know, to, mm. to hold on to those beliefs and values mm. when so many of the dominant social values are running contrary yeah, yeah. to what our beliefs are mm. on everything. Yeah. I don't have to go into detail, but when it yeah. comes to marriage, gender, all these things, yeah. we hold mm. a much more mm. socially conservative views mm. than most of the society. Mm. But uh, uh, for you in general, like most of the uh, exterior part you think Canada is a Muslim friendly country will, will you say that or... oh sure yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Oh, sure okay. yeah yeah mm. yeah I believe so I believe so 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 it's it's not like because as far as I know it, you're in USA like there Islamophobia in it's it's more it's more a serious issue so you mm. think in Canada there's less of those things like hate yeah, crime I'm, and things like that. I'm. I definitely prefer to be in Canada than in the U.S. <laughs> oh, okay. But but even in the yeah. U.S., I mean, I yeah. have to say, even in the U.S., when mm. I traveled recently to New yeah. York State, I even went to the South. It wasn't the Deep South, but I went yeah. to Kentucky mm. for the funeral of the boxer Muhammad Ali. Uh, this oh. was a few years ago. Uh. So Kentucky, I thought, is it's it's not Deep South, but it's kind of South, and the people are yeah. they more racist there and yeah. everything. Yeah. Yeah. Honestly, people were very nice to us. My oh, wife wears really? hijab. Mm. You know, they were very nice. So we were only there for a few days, but mm. everyone was very nice. So mm. I think even there, I think you have a minority of right wing extremists, a minority, mm. I think, in Texas mm. and other places. Okay, uh, okay. Yeah, I, I would like to think most Americans are, don't uh, hate mm. Muslims. Mm. But the other concern is that some of that Trump inspired right wing yeah. stuff, <laughs> yeah. you, as you know, that's spreading as well, too. Yeah. Some of that is coming to Canada now. Too. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, so. Okay. Uh, so, yeah, there's there's challenges. But, you know, yeah. again, tawakkal Allah, right? Tawakkal Allah. Just mm. having faith in Allah. We have to just do our yeah. job. We have to stick to our path. We have to mm. do what we have to do. Mm. And. If any anything else, it, it, it's a test from Allah. If there's any difficulties, yeah. if there's mm. any challenges, it's okay. This this world is not our permanent home. Mm. We're we're mm. here for a few years as a test. Yeah. And then mm. our permanent abode, our permanent home is in the akhirah, mm. the hereafter. Yeah. 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 Mm. So I, I'm also curious, like uh how how do you talk about Islam to non Muslim friends? Like, will you share with them? For example, like your, you, what, what you say that you, your, your, like the things you think is the real difficulty in, in Canada. Do you share these things with them a lot and how, how they react? Yeah. Well, I find, I find, uh, and Shuruk, they understand. <laughs> yeah. Shuruk, I, I find that there's a great power in the truth. If you speak yeah. the, the truth in a clear, yeah. sober way. Yeah. I find that that people respect that when they see that you're coming from a place of faith and conviction. So, for example, yeah. for example, uh, jihad. Okay, that's a popular, mm. controversial topic. Yeah. So, if someone asks me about hit jihad, Sadat, mm. what do you think about jihad? <laughs> right. Mm. Uh, of course, we want to explain that when ISIS and Al Qaeda, when they mm. uh, harm innocent people. Mm. When they kill women, children, yeah. when they torture people. Uh, yeah. Of course, we want to explain that that is not Islam. Yeah. That is not yeah. authentic Islam. All the Muslims condemn that. All the Muslims everywhere yeah. condemn that. Okay. But I don't like to go to the opposite extreme and say, well, jihad just means peace. Yeah. Jihad yeah. just means baking cookies <laughs> for your neighbors. <laughs> jihad just means helping old ladies cross the street. That's yeah. jihad. <laughs> Yeah, I heard that. Pe yeah, no, then people can see through that and they can mm. see that this person mm. is covering up. Mm. So I say, look, jihad is, you know, fighting in self-defense or fighting yeah. for a just cause. Yeah. Fighting for a just cause. Yeah. And and it fighting means fighting like, you know, the 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 military personnel of the mm. enemy. Yeah. Not the women, not the yeah. children, not the innocent yeah. people. Yeah. And you can give very, very simple examples to people, right? Um, sorry for using this sensitive example. I, yeah, I take responsibility. It's, okay. it's not yours. I take responsibility. 
that if tomorrow, God forbid, if China yeah. invaded Taiwan, yeah, and so, and the Taiwanese army, uh, the young men and mm. women of the Taiwanese army, they resisted and they fought. Yeah. Well, you know, we wouldn't call them terrorists, right? Mm. We would say that yeah. they're defending their country. Yeah. They're they're fighting. Um. So if you explain jihad like this to most people, they just nod mm. their head and say, "Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. That makes sense." Mm. But now. But if if a Taiwanese extremist went to Beijing mm. and bombed a train mm. full of innocent people, no, that's wrong. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's yeah. wrong. Mm. So Islam has very, I think, logical, not just logical, but mm. moral, ethical restraints yeah. and limits. Oh. I, I just explain it as it is, you know what I mean? Mm. And it's not our job to make people like it. It's not yeah. our job to make people like it. Yeah. Like, for example, for example, when people ask, um, Sadat, uh, mm. is the hijab, is that really religious or is it cultural? Uh, now, yeah. when they ask that question, I know they want me to say it's just cultural. Mm. But I can't. I yeah. can't say that. Yeah. So I say, mm. well, there are there there is a verse in the Quran and which is interpreted and understood mm. by the vast majority of scholars mm. to mean yeah. it's a veil, it's a covering yeah. of the head. And then there are hadiths, you know, hadiths mm. of yeah, the Prophet. Yeah. Uh, which also talk about hijab and head covering. So mm. it is religious and it's cultural. Because yeah, yeah. If the culture is mm. based on Islam, then it's yeah. going to be religious and yeah, cultural, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? yeah. Of course, because I when I when I was in Egypt and I talk about hijab with with people, and mm. there there's one uh, uh he he he's he's a a, a college student from Egypt uh, and. And he he told me that uh in Egypt that some some girl thinks that wearing hijab is beautiful, so mm -hmm. they wear it, but it's not for religious purpose. So he think in his mind that that hijab is not really hijab; it's just a a, a cloth covering your 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 head. That mm -hmm. that's all. So I think yeah, just like you said, it religion yeah. is is a very big part of it. Yeah. 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 Exactly. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Um, you know, there can be women wearing the hijab who don't really understand the yeah. proper religious mm -hmm. reasons for wearing the hijab. Yeah. Similarly, there are women that I've met who don't mm -hmm. wear the hijab. Yeah. But they do understand, and they even yeah. accept. They even yeah. accept that yes, I should be wearing the hijab. Yeah. But. You know, I'm weak or I'm lazy, yeah. but or one day, inshallah. You know, so yeah, it's. I'm sure in your conversations, in your research, you saw that you know, mm. human beings are a wide, varied lot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Varied yeah. understandings mm. and different levels of understanding. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm curious about how you started to learn Arabic, and is it easy to learn Arabic in Canada? Uh, in in my case, um. I took two years at the University of Toronto. Oh, okay. Yeah. And then I did about six months in Damascus, Syria. Yeah. Yeah. So I, so, you know, it wasn't, you know, it's, it wasn't a, a very long study. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, I, I'm at the point now where I can understand most of the Quran, mm, okay. uh, which was okay. my main objective. Like that yeah. was my main uh, goal. It yeah. wasn't necessarily to be conversant in Arabic, although that mm. would be good. Yeah. Uh, but it was to unlock the meanings, you know, of the mm. Quran, to be able to like recite the Quran and understand it as well. Mm. Um, okay. But again, I, I did say to you that I'm mm. not very skilled at picking up languages. I don't have a great knack for, for mm. languages. So, um, so other people in, uh, in, in, other people in my situation who would have studied two, three years might yeah. have done much better. Mm. Yeah. Mm. And what helped me a little bit uh, is that there are a lot of Arabic loan words in Urdu. Urdu mm. is one mm. of the main languages in Pakistan. Yeah. Mm. yeah. So oh. there are a lot of uh, Arabic and Farsi and Turkic words in yeah. Urdu. Mm. And so that, that also helped me along as yeah, well. Too. Yeah. yeah. I, I think just like Indonesian. Because I, yes. I I learned very small part of Indonesian, but there's yes. many Arabic words in in it too. Yeah. yeah. So even, I mean, your your daily, daily language. Yeah. Yeah, I, and this is one of the reasons I I wanted to interview is I think that yeah. your your story I think would be very inspirational <clears throat> to mm. many young Muslims because 
if you could be coming from a linguistic background where mm. there's really no connection or relationship between Chinese and Arabic, mm. uh, and and yet you were able to dedicate yourself and focus and learn mm. Arabic, then young Muslims who might be coming from Pakistani or Indian background, mm. Turkish background, Iranian background, yeah. Indonesian background. Yeah, for for them, it should be easier, you know, much easier for yeah. them to, mm. to learn Arabic. Yeah. And remember, yeah. also remember that from a young age, we're going to the masjid. So yeah. we're hearing the, the same yeah. ayat, the same verses of the Quran yeah. recited again and again. We're hearing those hadiths again and yeah. again. And at some point, you can even just start guessing at the meaning. Yeah. So that helps too, being yeah. exposed to... Islamic study circles, going mm -hmm. to the mosque regularly. That yeah, helps yeah, a lot yeah. too. So exactly. uh, even if it's only for the purposes of you practicing your Arabic, please go to the mosque on Friday. So you yeah. hear the Friday khutbah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That will help you maintain mm. your Arabic as well too. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, so uh, is, is there a big Arab community in Canada? I'm not that sure. Like, uh yes, I I can't tell you the numbers, but um, um there are some Arab in yeah yeah in in Toronto uh, one of our suburbs of yeah. Toronto is called Mississauga. I don't know if you've uh, heard of it, Mississauga. No. So uh, there are yeah. lots of Arabs in Mississauga. Uh, um, and then our oldest Muslim community is also an Arab Muslim community in um is is it in in Alberta, yeah, in Alberta, in Edmonton. Mm. Oh, so okay. if, uh, you know, after this conversation, if you want to look up on the internet, the, the yeah. oldest mosque in Canada, yeah. it's a mosque in Edmonton, mm. which was made, I think, in 1924. Oh, wow. Or it was in the okay. 1920s in yeah. any case. And those were largely Lebanese and Syrian mm. immigrants oh, okay. who, who had See. come from the then Ottoman Empire. Mm. The then Ottoman mm. Empire. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I also did uh, a video on my channel, which I mm. hope you'll watch it later on. Mm, okay. Uh, on um, the Albanian community in Toronto. Mm, oh, so, okay. yeah, sure. in the 1950s, they were the first ones to start a small masjid here in Toronto, yeah. mm. the Albanian community. Mm. Um, it sounds funny, but Canada let in Muslims over time. Yeah. There was a progression. Like, it was yeah. kind of related to, to skin color because... In the 1920s and 30s, 40s, yeah. it was the white Muslims. It was the white-skinned Muslims from uh, Syria, Lebanon, uh, yeah. Albania, yeah. Uh, Bosnia. Yeah, They were the ones who were allowed to come in the 1940s, uh, 1950s. Okay. Yeah. Then in the 1960s and 70s, the the you know the brown-skinned yeah. ones from Pakistan and India, like uh, my parents. Yeah. Then we started coming in. Oh, okay. And then, then in the late '80s, early '90s, yeah. the light-skinned black Muslims from Eastern uh, Africa, Somalia, oh, Ethiopia, okay. they uh. started coming. Uh. And then after that, you got <laughs> West African Muslims yeah, from yeah. Uh, Senegal mm -hmm. and yeah. Sierra Leone and all that. Yeah. So there was a, you know, there was a progression according <laughs> to <laughs> skin color. You know what I mean? So just, yeah, yeah, just remember yeah. that. Oh. Just remember uh, the earliest okay. Muslims white. Mm, then yeah, in the middle yeah. you got the brown skinned Muslims and then oh. later on you got all the African Muslims so we're a mix yeah we're a mix yeah. Yeah. Oh, so yeah, yeah. so uh, like for example like your your mosque in your neighborhood like it will be like for example this is a mosque for pa Pakistani Muslim or this is a mosque for Arab Muslim it's like that or you are all mixed together Which... very very few mosques would ever yeah. Put, you know Pakistani mosque yeah, yeah, or, I know, I know. or Somali I, Muslim yeah, yeah, yeah very yeah. few but mm. of course of course unofficially like if more yeah, yeah, Somalis yeah. are living in one area mm. then that mosque yeah. in that area will be more Somali uh, right so yeah, to answer your question in my area uh, most of the mosques in my area are mostly Somali uh, they're mostly oh, Somali okay. Okay. Uh, like before our interview I prayed mm. the Zuhr prayer the early mm. afternoon prayer yeah and I was the only non-Somali praying there, oh, I think. Okay, I didn't okay. see anyone else that was not Somali. <laughs> oh, really? yeah. I uh, like that because I like to feel special, you know, when I yeah, go yeah. in. <laughs> <laughs> I feel just like you in Egypt when you uh, go to the mosque. Okay, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So when I go in, everyone is extra friendly to me. Everyone yeah. is like extra nice. So oh. I like it. I like it. 
<laughs> but no, but here's cool. the thing. Here's the mm. thing. That's my area and also the mm-hmm. downtown area where you have yeah. more recent immigrants. But yeah. if you were in the suburbs of Toronto, mm. if you were yeah. in Mississauga, yeah. if you were in Milton, mm. um, if I was there and you asked me the same question, mm. then my answer would have been that the mosques are, uh, it would have been mostly Pakistani and Arab. Mm. Yeah, mostly okay. uh, maybe you know, 70%, 80% Pakistani yeah, and maybe 15, 20% Arab. Mm, That's yeah. how it is in the suburbs. Mm. But in the city, in the downtown area, mm. I'm close to the downtown. Yeah, yeah. It's it's more mixed. Yeah. And in my area, it just happens to be that. more uh, Somalis. Oh, yeah. okay. But yeah. you know what? Mm. Uh, we have a suburb called Scarborough. Uh, and okay. in Scarborough, there is a very small, they don't have a mosque, but they have a yeah. small, there's a small Chinese Muslim association. Oh, really? Yeah, very oh, small cool. Chinese Muslim mm. association. Yeah. Mm. You, and you there's even that, a few. That, that's close to Toronto or? Yes, yeah, it's part oh. of the greater Toronto area. Oh, okay. okay. It's part of the greater Understand. Toronto area. Yeah, yeah. No. And uh, and there's at least, uh, there's at least three, four uh, like halal Chinese restaurants mm, in scarborough mm. run by chinese oh. muslims like oh, they're actually yeah. run by chinese muslims yeah yeah i th- i think three of them like like most of them are uh, uyghur uyghur muslims mm, mm. and then one of them might be yeah. like normal chinese or mm, hui, hui. Mm. yeah 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 how do you say uh hui, hui, jiao? hui jiao? yeah hui jiao. but hui jiao. but now now in like we we try to prevent this this name more mm. because Hui Jiao it means uh people uh the religion that Hui people believe. Mm. But actually Islam is not like that. So yeah. now mm. we just use the 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 translation. We just say Islam like it's it's oh. direct from Islam. Like, I yeah. see. But yeah. some people will still say Hui Jiao in, yeah. in Taiwan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. But I will try to correct it. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Well, well, the reason I like to say it sometimes when yeah. you were asking me, how do I speak to non-Muslim people? Yeah. So when I speak to non-Muslims, I will try to connect Islam in some way to their culture. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. if I'm speaking to a Chinese person, sometimes I, I, I will say uh, Hui Jiao. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, just to remind them that, oh, Islam is not only mm. these Arabs or yeah, Pakistanis yeah. here in Canada. Yeah. This is something we know as well from back home. Mm. We know this from China as well. And sometimes they don't even know it's the same religion. Like they yeah. even ask me, yeah. like you're the same <laughs> one? I say, yeah, well, I'm, I'm, I'm Hui Jiao. You know, same, Hui Jiao same, yeah. same in Taiwan, same in Taiwan. Because some, some people, if you say Islam, they don't know what that is. Mm. Yeah, and you say Hui Jiao and they, they, they can understand. And at right, that time, right. I will use Hui Jiao instead. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So yeah. similarly, if I'm if I'm speaking to like a black American or yeah. someone from the Caribbean, I'll, I'll ask them, like, do you know Malcolm X was a Muslim? Mm. You know, did you know that? So, um, so, so I, I try to connect know. it with their culture. I, I, you know, I think I think almost I think almost every black American knows. I think almost every black American knows yeah. that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They know that. But I'll still remind them. But again, mm. sometimes they have a misunderstanding. Sometimes they think mm. that he he believed like all white people are bad, all white oh, people are evil. Uh, so I, I sometimes have to remind them or explain to them for the first time yeah. that Malcolm X used to believe that. Yeah. But before he died, he changed his mm. beliefs. Because mm. Islam, of course, doesn't allow you to believe that yeah. one race is better yeah, than another race. Yeah, 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 yeah. You're only better in Allah's sight according to your taqwa. Yeah. Taqwa is your mm. awareness of God, yeah. consci- consciousness of God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Okay. <laughs> well, you had a lot of questions for me. Yeah. We should do part one where Sadat <laughs> interviews Shuruk and the part two can be Shuruk interviews Sadat. Yeah, because yeah. I, I'm, I'm new to Canada and... Uh, before we we only con- connect with uh Chinese speaking community here in yeah. in yeah and mostly Taiwanese people yeah if so, if you wanted to if you wanted to get a tour of a couple of the mosques in Vancouver yeah. I don't know how busy your schedule might be yeah. but if you had time then I can connect you uh with uh, uh someone that I know and they can really? arrange for of course and they can oh. arra- they can they can send like. 
you know, they can send a lady to to come uh, and uh, probably pick you up, and and you know, we can we can connect an email and see if you have time, uh, uh, just so okay, you can okay, have a little sure. look. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, I'm interested. Yeah, and of it's, course, it's, uh, oh, okay. You, please, you no, go, go ahead. ahead. You go ahead first. Well, well I was going to say, of course, on I know you're not visiting Toronto on this trip, but yeah. on a future trip, if you ever yeah. come to Toronto, please reconnect with me again oh, because my okay. wife and I would uh, love to show you around and we yeah, can show you the yeah. mosques here. Whether it's in one year from now or 10 years from now, yeah, please okay. reconnect. My wife okay. and I would love to meet okay. you in person. Thank yeah. you so yeah. much. Yeah. And and uh, the, the the one last thing I want to say that I think you might be interesting to talking to one of our our female Muslim in Taiwan. Her her experience is very interesting. Like because before she she was uh, uh <laughs> like a, a bit like psychic because in 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 uh, our our folk religion temple we will have a a, a person it, it doesn't have to be men or women like just a person he uh he or she ha had the ability to talk with uh the god yeah yeah and and he like like she can she can communicate with 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 things you cannot see do you, do you understand what, what what that is okay yeah 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 and uh, but after that, uh, because uh, she study uh, she study about religion in in her graduate school, and there's one time when uh, on when when she was studying, she they they went to visit a mosque, and uh, the, the 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 Taipei mosque you you used to oh, go, okay. yeah yeah yeah, and at that time because she says she can she can see many jinni. You know, like oh, like just the gin. yeah, mm. yeah, yeah. So mm. She says she can she can saw it. So every time she went to a new place, she will try to ask those jin what what mm. happened, uh, like the s situation in in this this space or things like that. Mm. And she said at that time when she went to the Taipei mosque, she didn't saw any jin there. Oh, and very she, interesting. She, yeah, she think it's very it's very rare in yeah. like that, and so um, after that she started to learn about Islam, and she she think that uh, Islam is more more uh, is closer to what she think religious really are, religion really is. So mm. uh, she 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 converted after that, and uh, like she said like her her experience is very special yeah and and she said before when she was young when she she worked in the temple she always think that people they 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 went to the temple for some sort of purpose and at that time she think that she wants to create a religion that there there's no like uh because in in our temple we have like statue uh for for the god yeah mm -hmm. and and she think she think that if if she can create a, and if she can build a temple she she doesn't want any of that mm -hmm. any of that icon and yeah. after she uh learned about islam she thought of what she thought before and mm -hmm. she thought that, that that too is very close and she was very surprised so that affects her converted to yeah. islam yeah See, um, I, I, I like if you were to think of like the most beautiful Taiwanese actress or yeah. the or the most handsome uh, Taiwanese actor or Hong Kong mm. actor. Right. Um, if, if I drew a picture of him, even if I was a very gifted artist, yeah. if I if I drew a painting or a picture of him, I showed it to you, you, you know, you might say, yeah, that that's a pretty good uh, drawing or picture. Yeah. But uh it doesn't look as good as the real thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, <laughs> the real thing, she is much more beautiful. He is mm. much more handsome, you know, the real yeah, thing. Yeah. So my point is that if we can't fully capture the beauty mm. of of even a human being, and a human mm. being is a very finite, limited thing, mm. Mm. Uh, how can we capture the glory and the majesty mm. of the creator, of Allah? Yeah. Yeah, you know, you yeah. can't, you can't put mm. Allah in a box. You mm. know what I mean? Yeah. So, uh, yeah. So this, it makes sense that we don't draw uh, pictures yeah. of God. Yeah. And and how, and how should we draw him? Should I, 
Should I draw him as a man or as a woman? Mm, yeah, yeah. Should I make him with brown skin or white skin? Yeah, yeah. Wide eyes, round mm -hmm. eyes. Yeah. So no, Allahu Akbar. You know, God is greater than all of that. He's He's yeah. not limited by these things. You know. Yeah. And mm -hmm. as for the jinn, which you were speaking of, mm -hmm. um, it, it you know this is this is it's natural for the human being to believe in the supernatural. Mm -hmm. The supernatural yeah. means yeah. more than just this material world. Yeah. yeah. You know. And we have different words for it. Some people yeah. call it angels, jinn, yeah. demons, ghosts, Ghost. poltergeists. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But we know that there are entities and there are forces which are beyond our control. Mm, yeah. There's an American Muslim professor, Dr. Uh, Abdul Hakim Jackson. Mm. And he gave a very good, simple example. He said, for anyone who thinks that they're in control of their life, mm. just remember, like, just remember that time when someone that you really love wasn't picking up the phone when you were phoning them mm, yeah like think of your mother your father your son yeah. whoever you're calling them calling they're not picking yeah. up yeah and it's been two hours three hours and you're like oh please i hope he's okay i mm. I, I i hope i hope she's okay nothing happened mm. in that moment you realize your complete helplessness yeah you yeah. are completely mm. dependent on yeah. other forces yeah. you know now i think the difference between islam and many folk religions is that yeah. these supernatural entities and supernatural forces mm -hmm. they're not random and arbitrary mm -hmm. they, they they are they have to be under the control of one power mm -hmm. which mm -hmm. is allah yeah. yeah and they have to have been created as well like the mm -hmm. the jinn where did they come from mm -hmm. the spirits the demons the who made them? Where did they come mm. from? There, it all has to have started from one. Mm. Yeah. So I yeah. think Islam puts it all in focus. Mm. It puts it in focus. You know. Yeah. yeah. Yes, these things exist, but they are under the control of yeah. Allah, God. Yeah. yeah. And if God wants to protect you, then nothing can harm you. Mm. And yeah. if if and if God wants to harm you, then no one can protect you. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Cool. Okay. That's all I want to say. Excellent. Yeah. Well, thank you so much. Thank you yeah, so much, uh, Shuruk. You know, you gave yeah. uh, so much time, and that's despite the fact that you were jet lagged. I know you were very, very tired <laughs> from your travels. <laughs> so I we okay. re really appreciate it very mm. much. And uh, and we'll continue to be in touch in email, and email. Yeah. And you can let me know if you have some time. Okay. Uh, when that is. And okay. then I will see if I can uh, get my contact to arrange for okay, okay. some sisters, you know, to yeah, 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 meet with yeah. you and show you the masjid. Okay, okay. And uh, and inshallah, inshallah, mm. one day when when you do embrace Islam, when you do become Muslim, then okay. do remember to pray for us too. Okay, remember to inshallah. Pray for my family, mm. inshallah. Yeah. Okay. Barakallahu feek. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you. Okay. Assalamualaikum. Okay. Assalamualaikum. <laughs>